Hello, amazing indie gamers, and today is Steam Next Fest. It's the first day, October 14th, and it lasts until the 21st. So go play some demos. Today we're gonna check out the demo for the game Broken Alliance. It's by the developer Placeholder Gameworks. It's also uh, coming from the makers of Death and Taxes. I just recently bought that game, so I need to play Death and Taxes because this demo is pretty cool and I wanted to show it to y'all as the first demo for Steam Next Fest, so let's just jump in. So it's currently in development. Some features are still incomplete. Okay. I know this is a demo. Smells of the brine of the vast and unfathomable ocean. It has not been an easy journey, though not the worst you've had either. Still, you felt the shift on the road. Times have grown tense and perilous. The factions quarrel, threatening reprisal over any transgression, insult, grievance. They threaten each other with war. They threaten the future of Ale itself. Yet, there is, as always, a glimmer of hope. If the leaders of the four factions agree to attend the gathering, if they find a peaceful way out of this peril. And so, Anchorage, the first on your list, draws closer with every step. Anchorage? Onwards, Not Anchorage, then, Alaska. Emissary. <laughs> Beside you stands Pryor. The silent apostate. Yes, yes. Ahead awaits your other companion, Yorick, the Elden Hawk, having returned from his reconnoiter. Okay, to move the camera, use WASD or arrow keys. To move your hero, click where you want them to go or drag your hero into a clear ground, character, or building. Hover the mouse over the quest bar. Invite or near the third to the gathering. Talk to the Anchorage Leap. Double click on your commander icon below to open the army screen. Okay, so we got commander information here. I like my portrait and so far what I'm seeing, the map is gorgeous. The, I really like the pixel art. So artifacts are gonna be here. What I have equipped is gonna be here. Here's my army. Can I pull this one over here? Yep, it looks like I can pull Briar over here. So, it looks like a bird person with a, I don't know, gun? <laughs> I don't know, you think there's a weapon? <laughs> All right. But yeah, this map is like gorgeous. Okay, artwork is, I just love the artwork. Okay, so it looks like we can just go to this hedgehog down here. Or you can just click. Oh, and here's a sign. Southward, the rocky coast. Eastwards, Guideheim. Yorick, your compatriot on many expeditions. His armor covered in dust and bramble. A bold warrior. He came on the journey for the same reason you did. For all the banter... He also strives for peace. In actual war, warriors do not last for long. Took you long enough, emissary. I was beginning to think you got yourself lost without me. The scales of his armor clink as he attempts to shake the dust from it. Oh my gosh, I love Yorick's voice. Great voice acting, love it. And we know you can't rely on Pryor there. He can't find a path even when standing on it. Pryor gestures at Yorick in a way which can only be interpreted as vulgar, then grins. <laughs> Worry not, friends, the road looks clear. No foes in sight. A shame, too. I wanted to fight something. Our, our fighting hedgehog here. Okay, and so we're a nice, the emissary. You'll get a chance before we reach Mount Ishros. I'd get, oh, I'd bet gold on that. Hey, will you? I wouldn't mind a good payday. Not this time. 
Can't make life too easy for you. Anything else to report? Nothing much. All seems calm enough. The easterly road will lead us to Skidheim. Oh, Skidheim. I called it Skidheim. <laughs> Let's get going then. Time is of the essence. Okay, what does this do over here? Okay, so this must be the spell book. Okay. Open the map a little bit up over here. Okay, let's go back to the town. Behold the gates of Skithheim, mighty capital of Anchorage. Guards patrol the ramparts while banners in blue cerulean turquoise flutter overhead. You hear the booming call of a horn, and the gates slowly begin to open, granting you entrance into its wind-stricken streets. Okay, this is a cute little town. I like the windmills here. Must be a very windy place because there's a lot of windmills going. <laughs> I'm just kind of ho my hovering my mouse over to make sure there isn't anything for me to click on. Oh, looks like we've got this over here. Looks like another door over here. The gates over over here. Okay, let's go to this. The interior of the town hall is designed to display the splendor of Anchorage. The walls are adorned with murals of historical battles and triumphant victories, some perhaps more dubious than others. The central gallery cutting through the hall is lined with intricate sculptures of legendary Inheriar, gifted to the Hersir of Anchorage by masterful Trollkin artisan. The figure waiting by the hearth is aged, his beard gray. Yet, he still stands proud and tall, the honored High Inquisitor of Anchorage, leader of the Alliance through endless hardships. He turns to face you, one eye smirking. I like his portrait here. Emissary, ravens have foretold of your arrival. His severe voice is undercut by a tinge of mockery. Scouts and outriders, I take it? He shrugs in reply. Well, we didn't try to trek across your lands and scenes, so I applaud them for their perceptiveness. I take it you know why I have come. Of course. A gathering of the leaders of Aeol in the ruins before Ishros. A common ground, notably. Watched over by the specters of our ancestors. This is great. I feel like I'm listening to an audiobook uh, for a fantasy book. A fantasy audiobook is what it feels like. I love it. Tell me, who set you on this little expedition? That's not for me to say. How enigmatic. <laughs> but it does pique my interest a fair bit. <laughs> so you will attend the gathering? Hmm. I'm considering it. I am, after all, a man of peace. The Alliance of Anchorage was formed to safeguard stability and order, and I won't be the one to betray my forebears. We'll make sure the factions stay in line. In their blind recklessness, they dabble with magic, putting all of us in danger. Deceivers and trespassers. He trails off, mumbling off a slew of unclear indictments, then snaps his attention back to you. <laughs> He's got to go find a cloud to raise his fist to. <laughs> However, to tell the truth, I'm not convinced you'll make it to the mountain. The path is dangerous. Uh, Rude, are you underestimating us, Ornir? <laughs> Yorick fails in his attempt to stifle a derisive snort. <laughs> this Elden Hog may be of warrior stock. <laughs> well, that remains to be seen. First, 
Prove yourself worthy by defeating my warrior at the sawmill. If my shield maiden reports of your honorable victory, I will attend the gathering. We must beat her so we can get Ornir there. Besides, you need wood to rebuild a bridge that was recently swept away by a deluge. Okay. If this is how to prove your fortitude, then so be it. My thanks, High Inquisitor. Prove our fortitude. Yeah, I've always wanted to battle a Valkyrie. Suppose a shield maiden will have to do. <laughs> Yorick, go get her. <laughs> All right. Yorick is our go getter. Let's explore this town a little bit more. So here's like the docks, I guess. Oops, and that's how you close the gates right there. Can you get on this? A gale blows in from the ocean. Waves crash into the stone of the Staves in a constant battle between land and sea. The port ahead holds rows upon rows of skiffs, sloops, trade cogs, galleys, long ships, rapid vessels of war for cutting through treacherous water. At the farthest dock, you see the pride of Anchorage's armada, Ichthyanir, the fastest flagship ever built with armament to match. Ornir the Third, the Protector, aims to hold control over the ocean. Closer now, the many kin of Anchorage move to and fro, busy with their routine. Folks bustle between warehouses and boats, carrying goods on and off. Salt-bitten sailors sit on benches, smoking herbs with acrid smell. A stunning siren glides by. Followed by her retinue of warriors, their eyes glinting with a warning of violence. Or is it something else? No one else pays the group much attention. The lighthouse calls ships home. The bitter sting of the frigid sea wind brings a tear to your eye. Okay, I like how they've made, like, that part of the story. They're telling us about the ships and the the docks out here and I like seeing all the tails it looks like from whales but I don't really know if it's from whales the map is so gorgeous this town is so cute okay let's get out of the gates go this way just mousing over everything to make sure nothing pops up god this Pixel map is so pretty. <laughs> oh, look at all of the... I don't know if those are cows or not, but they're cute. And then they got maybe their little pigs, the right and pens. Adorable. Love it. Okay, that looks like that's where our combat's going to be. And then we've got a sign right here. So let's go ahead and read the sign for now. Northward portal, southward Gidheim, eastward sawmill. So I'm this is probably the sawmill and we're gonna have to defeat you the see, shield maiden. A shield maiden, noble fighter of Anchorage, protector of the people, come flame and storm. Her armor gleams in the frigid sunlight as she brushes the mane of her war horse. Welcome, emissary. Talk of your quest seems to be spreading fast. Are you tough enough for what lies ahead? Don't underestimate us, lass. In my time, I've fought worse than you. That's what we're here to find out, Sir Hog. The shield maiden mounts her horse, preparing her armaments. Defeat me in honorable combat, and you may continue your quest. If you fail here, you will be no match for the dangers that lie ahead. There we go, Yorick. I kept up my promise of a fight. I wish we'd had that bed. Oh, I'd be sleeping <laughs> on a mound of golden coins tonight. <laughs> Yorick chomps on a mushroom, then readies his mace and shield. <laughs> Prior, solemn for once, arms crossed in front of his chest, bows deeply to the shield maiden. So Prior is our silent one. Okay, in combat, start by choosing a card from your deck and then select one of your companions to use the card. 
After, select a target based on card type. Okay, drag your companions into the hexes to deploy them. Okay, we figured this out earlier. I'm going to want Yorick right there since he's the melee type. Okay, I think we're ready to go. I kind of like this, seeing this kind of setup, map setup. Prior is ranged unit and can attack from afar. Yorick is a melee tank and only attack enemies next to him. Oh, we want Yorick to get up close. Okay. But yeah, I'm liking the hex map we've got here and the artwork we've got. And then we ourselves are back here on the horse. We are the lovely emissary with the gorgeous horse. I love this horse's white mane. Black horse with white mane. It's gorgeous. I love it. <laughs> okay. Let's get started. So I guess our cards are down here. We get one. So it looks like it takes one energy. Yeah, stamina cost is one. This is a just a basic attack. Then we've got faint. Another basic attack. And then we've got two moves. I think we're going to work on trying to move for it closer. If an unit runs out of stamina, they can no longer play any cards. Okay. And I think we're going to move prior a little bit so he can get a an attack. I don't know if prior can get an attack on horse lady, how close he needs to be. Let's see if we bring him up here. I kind of wish I knew what faint does. I don't really know what faint does because there's no, I don't see any descriptions, but we're going to put faint on prior. Oh, we're not even, we're not close. So if you right click on the character, it looks like you don't have to use it. I wonder. Yeah, we need to be closer. So it doesn't look like there's anything we can do. So that's my bad. Because I've used both move cards, so there's just nothing we can do. All right. So. Let's see. We're going to have prior attack. Just did not hit her for very much. Okay, hit, him, hit her for seven that time. Okay. I, hmm. Not sure if I want prior to move or not. I think we'll have prior move. Like to right here. Oh no. <laughs> maybe that was bad. Oh, uh, maybe that is faint. Okay. It's nice because. When she attacked prior, uh, prior attacked back, so that's good. Um, let's put move on Yurik. And then we got to put move on prior. Have prior use crippling attack. Let's put, I want to put Berserk on Yorick, but Yorick only has one stamina. So let's just go ahead and have put an attack. Let's use attack. Okay. That works. You won. Victorious. Defeated. Emissary versus Shield Maiden. The Shield Maiden raises her blade in resignation and thrusts it into the ground. A sign of respect from a noble guardian of Anchorage. She brushes her auburn hair away from her face. Well fought, Emissary. You have proven your mettle. Be careful, though, on your path. 
The creatures of Slaumia are not to be trusted. The magic of Phobos is noxious. We'll manage. The chance for diplomacy is too important to waste. We all wish for peace. But sometimes, the only way to maintain order is through strength. In any case, the High Inquisitor will be notified of your success. You may use the sawmill. She picks up her sword and sheaths it, turning to leave. Click on the sawmill to capture it and then exploit it. Building captured. You want to exploit resources, Wood yes. Wood from the forests that cover Aeol. Used for construction, fuel, tools, and weapons. Abundant and versatile. Alongside ore, it is the most commonly used material. Yet be wary of excessive logging warms paradise. It may draw the wrath of the Earth Mother. For trees also live and breathe, and are connected to the land below. That's true. Use Reduce Recycle. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else we need to grab? Looks like we have wood in here. And then we've got this sawmill over here. The ruined half of a wooden bridge lies ahead. The river Elivahar flows down from the towering mountains in the west, cutting through anchorage lands on its way to the ocean. So this must be the bridge that Onir was speaking of that it needed wood for fixing, repair. Rebuilding a bridge is not easy, but after some hearty labor, the task is done. Not a moment too soon, the thought crosses your mind. And you didn't fall into the water once. <laughs> the road to the portal heads due north. Didn't fall into the water? <laughs> That would not be me. I would fall into the water. <laughs> Use the alt option key to the alt slash option key to highlight interaction interactable objects in alt. Okay, so I see something over there. There you go. The piece of gold glints in the sunlight. A precious mineral used for trade all across L. Mortals dig for it. Mortals mold and process it. Mortals fight and die over it. A mere substance of the soil, its value is arbitrary. Based on that very glint and the tacit agreement between mortals who have deemed it to have value. Still, one cannot deny. Especially when holding a piece of gold between their fingers, the powerful effect it has. Okay. okay, it looks like we've got a portal. The portal of teleportation is a stone platform raised slightly above the rest of the ground. Its surface, ancient and scarred, is covered with various unknown symbols and glyphs. The air around the platform throbs and pulses with vast magical energy. Uh, never been fond of these. Teleportation's not a natural way to travel. Yorick shudders, his spines bristling. <laughs> Make it much faster, though, for all the good and ill that it brings. Makes me queasy in the stomach is what it does. It doesn't feel right. You sure it's not all those mushrooms you keep gobbling down? <laughs> Yorick snorts and <laughs> wags his finger. Don't tell me not to eat my mushrooms. Queasy it may be, but it solves the issue of long distance travel for the time being. Step onto the platform and jump into the abyss, emissary. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> okay, northward, the core mine. Eastward, Tenebrae, and Westward Port. Sure, we have to go to Tenebrae. All of the leaders have to attend, or there's no point to negotiations. Aye, but these Vobosians give me the jitters. A faint shiver passes through York's spiny backside. Prior, his brow furled, signs a criticism, followed by a question. Ugh, you just haven't met enough of them. Especially the prophets and their ilk. The flock, I mean. The orderlies who run Phobos. 
Suppose they're trying to unnerve us on purpose, crafting a facade of intimidation. Well, it works, that's for sure. <laughs> They're just like any of us. Come now. We've lingered too long. All right. Check this out. The vast chasm of the quarry looms ahead, a pit of pitch black darkness. No light escapes from its depths. Scary. Across the quarry, you see a row of creatures, minuscule like ants, scurrying on a footpath, heading to toil in the darkness. You shout a greeting across the chasm, but get no reply. Not even an echo. Okay, Sound that's creepy. <laughs> disappears into the dark alongside light, never to return. Okay, no, no echo? <laughs> Several cranes tower above the quarry pit, ready to lift out the wealth from below. Mine cars dangle from hooks. With the crimson of blood iron, blood iron like red stars against a cosmic backdrop. Hey. Okay. Oh look at these little creatures. They're cute. I think this is they're supposed to be scared because it's kinda What's the hanging from the trees? That's kind of creepy. <laughs> okay, this is a creepy map. I like it though. Here we go. Okay, we can go to here. The ominous town hall of Tenebrae looks far more pleasant on the inside. The walls are covered with colorful tapestries. On them, various strange creatures posing in unnerving ways, doing unidentifiable acts. Yet there is something lively about all of them. The craft of these is remarkable, the material smooth and soft. Woven of spider silk spun by the horrors of Phobos. In the middle of the hole stands a shadow. This is a scary creature, place. One of the prophets. Arms raised in greeting. Dark obscurity surrounds them in the form of a mantle. A multitude of eyes intermittently blinking within it. Sounds like a place Nord would like in video games. A guest in our citadel. Their voice echoes through the hall. The direction it's coming from, difficult to discern. <laughs> Welcome, visitor, and partake in our hospitality. What brings you to us? The voice actor did good on Murmur of Madness. <laughs> I think they did great. A gathering of leaders at Mount Ishros to talk of peace and ease the tensions at the old ruins. Ah, certainly age-old capital of the forgotten people but we remember <laughs> nothing but dust now <sighs> nothing but dust <sighs> is dust what we will one day also become or are we dust already lacking comprehension animated only by the potency of magic the umbral mantle around the prophet whirls with increasing speed. So then, emissary, we take it you wish us to attend? Yes, everyone is needed. But what is this peace to us, we children of Phobos, followers of the hallowed creator? Ever tormented by our neighbors, hated by the other factions for who we are, <laughs> what we are. Okay. <laughs> they come at us with blade and spear and axe and spell to kill us and to steal from us because they feel it. Fear of the unknown. Well, we get why madness isn't their name. <laughs> ah, dark times are ahead, but we embrace change. We thrive in it. That is our strength. Then share this with the others. You have legitimate complaints. I agree. This is what the gathering is for. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my An god. An eruption of laughter booms from every direction of the hall at once. Alas, would that we could see trouble already brews. The road to our portal is blocked, and our manor refinery seized from us. Okay, we're gonna probably help you, but I'm a little scared. If you would be so kind to reconquer it, then surely one good deed will be met with another. Ah, the refinery will provide enough mana to clear the way. Though That's where good. you get a spell is not our concern. Don't you have troops and workers for this kind of work? Ah, <laughs> your work. The many eyes narrow in what feels like ridicule. All right, I'll help. I have your word. I have your word, and you'll come to the gathering. Murmur of madness nods. Before I go, you already knew who I was and what I came here for before I arrived, didn't you? Murmur of madness stands in silence. But you can still sense the mischievous smile that isn't there. They wave you to depart. Okay, hey, this is a pretty screen. Okay, this must be where we're at. The Tower of Magic, wherein warlocks and conjurers explore the possibilities of spell casting. Here, spells can be bought for a hefty price. But today, due to the nature of your quest, the Phobosians gift you a spell free of charge. Oh, I thank you. I do like spells. I'm guessing it's in the spell book that we looked at. Oh, maybe we can't look at it right now. Okay, let's... Maybe we can look at it now. So we have a spell here. 50% chance to either kill a target unit instantly or deal 50% of their maximum HP and damage and inflict burning. The tiles the unit stands on converts to Phobos terrain can be cast on obstacles to destroy them. Okay, so we can get rid of obstacles that are in our way. Um, so this must be the spell. So it's not like you can drag it down to your hot bar or anything. So maybe we just have to open our book we're gonna use it. I don't really know. Uh, but it looks like it's gonna cost this. <laughs> Whatever that is. I guess it would be mana, the mana they were talking about. Check out the sign. Northward, Mana Refinery Portal Tenebrae. Okay. Was there anything else? No. Okay. So let's go back down here. The road to the portal is blocked. Vast chunks of rubble have fallen onto the path, or perhaps piled so on purpose. Okay, so we can't use this, I don't think. No, nope. can't even press the button. Okay, can't use that right now. Because we need that green stuff. So let's go further on the map. Probably what we need to defeat so we can unlock this back here. That must that must be where we're gonna get mana. Oh. Okay, and there looks Before like there's ore the there. Before the refinery lies a makeshift camp. Accursed raiders await you. Weapons primed. Golden bronze plating glimmers in the rays of the sun. To your surprise, these are forge troopers. Recommendation. Leave now, whoever you are. The observer slowly glides a few paces towards you, his mechanical tentacles swaying in the breeze. Hmm, we can take him. Fancy forge tech won't stand up to a solid blow from my mace. <laughs> I love Yorick. Fairly agitated, Prior signs for caution. His motions catch the eye of the observer. The scale plating on its tentacles flare up, then subside. Apostate, unexpected to see you in present company. It will not restrain us from what must be done. Prior gestures a sequence of messages to the observer, who proceeds to ignore the Kemdi rebel. Explain yourself, Forgekin. Why are you raiding in Slaumir? None of your concern. A warning was delivered. Ignored. Prepare for combat. 
Okay. Okay, yeah, I think I'm okay with this because York is close to those two. And then we're just going to keep Prior up there because he's going to have to run around. All right. So let's use these first moves. Right. I'm just going to use these first moves to try to get um, Yorick as close as possible. Okay, I don't think... I don't think um, Fire can attack from back here. It's too far away. We've got a Power Bash, but we can't use it. I don't think we're close enough. Nope, it's not eaten. We don't have enough stamina on Yorick. All right. I think this, yeah, this is an attack. So let's end for right now. Started on the oh, so yeah, the close attack. This tree looks like it attacks back or it has like thorns or something. I wonder if I wonder if that only happens if you melee it. We may want Yorick to move. We don't really have we don't have another stamina. Can we attack using fire? Yep. There we go. Dang. This tree. Yeah, so this tree wants to stay on us because it's a, like... That's annoying. <laughs> Alright. Use Berserk. Faint. There we go. And then we'll end it from there. Ooh. My poor Yorick. <laughs> My poor Yorick. Okay. I hope this kills that tree. There we go. But they didn't hit too hard because we're right up in his face since it's ranged. Okay, we're going to use faint. Berserk. There we go. Bye bye, mushroom. Mushroom looking robot. <laughs> the forge troopers lie defeated in the gray dust. You gaze at the motionless mechanical frame of the observer. Nothing to indicate it had ever been alive. No liquid spilled. A gust picks up flakes of the wooden shell of the tronco. You consider how much trouble this means for the state of Aeol. Another outrage for Murmur of Madness to bring to the gathering. Prior stands farther away, his back awkwardly tense, cleaning his weapon. Not paying any attention to the remains of the fallen, straining to do so. <laughs> a challenge after all. We could use a chance to recover from the bruises. Yorick grunts. 
Rubbing his shield arm, a trace of blood smears his forehead. Burden Vale is next. Pico will surely be gracious, as he's known to be. Ah, indeed. Throw me into the radiant wellsprings of Viridis, please. <laughs> I'll never leave that warm embrace. You okay, Pryor? Paradise beckons, did you hear? Pryor turns to face Yorick. Come then, what are we waiting for? Let's get a move on. Oh, and then we gotta make sure to take that ore. deposits war. are common throughout Slaumir, the blighted land of Phobos. Many are familiar with its crimson hue and sharp edges, as if the mineral itself wants to injure those who grasp for it. Blood iron is considered a vile substance, as the prophets of Phobos use it to fuel their rituals. And true, blood iron has many uses. The consequences depend on the user. It is the lifeblood of the land, taken form, its striking beauty only amplified by its dangerous nature. This is, so far, it's kind of reminding me of like an old school game, maybe Might and Magic or something, like old, the old school one. Pick up the blood iron, like maybe not exactly, but I feel like it could go that way. Pick up the blood iron next to the mana refinery. I already did that. Go over the here. mana refinery puffs out fumes of various smells and colors. The space around the building throbs with unnatural power. This is where rare resources can be refined into all purpose mana. Okay. I guess this it needs one of these. We just picked up blood iron, so let's put a blood iron in. And then it'll give us this, which is mana. Processed and refined. That's how we use our mana. spell. The greenish powder falls through your fingers, each grain tingling with the power of potentiality. Mana is the material basis for casting powerful spells, bending natural laws to your will transforming the world itself. It ought to frighten a sober mind that such power is readily available for most. But power blinds, turns people greedy, selfish, willfully obtuse. Much has been destroyed with magic. But then again, much has also been created by it. More than you know. Okay, click on the spell book to cast combust on the highlighted rubble. Right, come. And that that's highlighted. Oh, that's the one that we can't get through. Can we do it from here? Oh wow! So you can the impact cast the, the spell, spell across the map. Was more powerful than you assume. A crater now resides where the pile of rubble used to be. Oh, it was an explosion and a half! Magic is not something to trifle with, so warns the Einherr Council. Fair point to them. It's why I personally don't trifle with it. Might get my nose blown clear off. <laughs> and I like my nose. I like your nose too, Yorick. I wager the Forgekin we fought blocked the path when they came through here. The gambling habit is not going to end well in the long run, Yorick. Odds are good, though. Seems <laughs> like poor play on their part, rendering them stuck on this side of the world. Sure, if they did it. If so, maybe they weren't planning to return home. Maybe they were going somewhere, but where? Nobody left to ask, unless we ask Meridian. He shrugs, rubbing his fuzzy chin thoughtfully. We'll see when the time comes. Let's go. Hey, that was fun. I really had fun with the spell. I really like this spell. I didn't expect to be able to cast that spell across, like, right across the map. I thought we'd have to get next to that. That was fun. Beat me up, Scotty. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's more ore. Got another piece of ore. 
Okay, let's ride up. You stand before the gates to Verdant Vale. Verdant Vale. Blooming capital of paradise. The air hums and buzzes with the vitality of nature. An undescribable diversity of green hues strike your eyes from the thriving lushness of forest and jungle. The gates swing open by unseen means, allowing passage. Oh look, it looks like there are camels sitting in the flowers. That's really pretty. This pixel art on the map is gorgeous. Look at this town. This is really pretty. I really like this. Very colorful. I love it. What's this? The life seed is most often found growing across Viridis, the core territory of paradise. These particular saplings do not easily take root and few understand why this is so. Coming across a life seed is usually taken as a sign of good fortune, for the vines are known for their myriad healing and cleansing properties. Okay, so they have cleansing and healing properties, so that's good. Anything else? Nope. Okay, let's go over here. The flourishing town of Verdant Vale twists I really like his it. portrait colorful plant life buzzing with the vitality so potent you can nearly feel it with your skin trees and flowers roots and vines all intertwined into dynamic architectural shapes the whole is lined with two rows of pedestals upon them an exhibit of the most intricate jewelry the nimble fingers of paradise are able to craft a small statured wyvet sits on a stump-like seat, attention set on a tiny item in his hand. He wears a vibrant garb made from the fibers of plants only grown in Viridis. His woodcraft mask reveals a wide smile of sharp teeth. Do you know what this is? Pico demonstrates the item as you approach, a greenish root-like trinket. A life seed? Not quite. Close. Crafted from the shell of a life seed. The root still attached. Excellent material for rings, necklaces, bracelets, the like. Leftover matter from that which nurtures our lives. Not just paradise, but all of Aeol. Yourself included. And so, we dedicate these small gifts to the Earth, Mother. No point letting it go to waste, don't you think? I suppose not. But lessons in artistry are not why you are here. No, there's a gathering in the old ruins at Mount Ishros to talk of peace before tensions run too hot. Ah, wonderful. We must have peace. It's the only way to safeguard nature, to care for life. Such a momentous chance cannot be wasted, of course. But we know the Earth Mother has to give her blessing upon this endeavor. Else we may all succumb to disharmony. Something about this, about the story with the, the different factions and their different personalities, kind of reminds me of Star Trek. A shrine, not far from here. Lay upon it the appropriate offering and you will be granted the benevolence of Aelmar. And what exactly is the appropriate offering? <laughs> That's for you to figure out, my friend. Oh, come on. Pico's <laughs> mouth widens into a sly grin. Of course it does. Don't worry not. Have my booklet on the dialects of paradise. With it, you can decipher the writings on the shrine. I mean, that would be nice. A gift from the herb, doctors. <laughs> Given the importance of your quest... I'm grateful. In addition, it's clear your travels have been hard. Yet the road to the mountain may hold even more unkind surprises. You won't make it with injured and tired troops. Visit our arm, rest, and heal. You don't have to tell me twice, Chief. <laughs> a quick break will do us all good. All right, let's go. Such a pretty town. Look at the beaches over there. It's so okay. Oh, that's where we came from. <laughs> Sorry. 
Let's go this way. Ooh, or An Alm is a place for weary travelers to rest and recover from their injuries. Oh, nice. The tavern-like Four Hall is a bustle of visitors, a motley of people chatting with each other, occasionally calling for new drinks. At the far end of the hall are doors that lead to the famous pools of paradise. It reminds me of TNG. And like they went down to, especially it was like in the first season, they went down to this place. I think they had a bunch of beaches. I don't know. I don't totally remember. <laughs> but that's what this is feeling like. And now we're going to rest. Uh, the road makes one forget what comforts are. I don't think you'll ever be able to. I, I don't think you'll ever be capable of forgetting that. I'm a creature of comfort. I. Though folks may not think so, looking at me. This is <laughs> That's what funny. makes the hardship worth it, you know. Moments of calm between the struggles. A symbol of our expedition, if you think about it. An attempt to capture peace before it flees our grasp. And the world trembles into death and discord. You can stand here and be as pessimistic as you want. <laughs> I'm going for a swim. <laughs> and maybe a mug of ale. What a cute hog. <laughs> yes, yes. Rest up while you can. We can't stay too long, Forge. The final target awaits. Okay. It's gonna cost us gold. You know, the ore that we just picked up. That's fine. Let's rest. Your army returned to full health. So that's how you heal. Is that the alms, I guess? So I'm guessing in the full game that, that you would go to alms in order to heal up your party after your fights. Okay, so northward is Verdant Vale, southward is the Alm, westward is Shine um, to the Elma Portal. Aeola Portal? I'm not sure how to say it. Let's go up this way. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Look at these. Are these camels? I don't know if they're camels, but they're cute. Oh, there's another creature over here, too. But let's check out this right here. Okay, so this must be the place where we have to do... We have to figure this out. And so we can read it because we were given a book. Buried within Aeol's embrace, I grant life to all I grace. The sun's rays and metal form the treasure sought in common storm. I can float upon the sea, but not a vessel that you see. You touch, I am cold, though my color is fire. What am I? A gem of desire. Okay. So the first is I grant life to all I grace and that would be the life seed. Oh, we need, cause this last one I'm pretty sure is blood iron. We need blood iron. Drag resources into the riddle slots in order to solve. We don't have blood iron, we need blood iron. Let's talk to this. The path to the portal is guarded by a pack of moth cats. Fast and ferocious skirmishers of paradise. Good-natured creatures, so it is said. Until you threaten the ideals of the faction, the Warden of the Mothcats nods at you. Emissary, we can't allow the use of the portal without authorization from the Herb Doctors. Okay, do we need to go back to get blood iron? Okay, we might need to go back to get blood iron. Because this is where you get blood iron. I'm looking on the map because I'm wondering if there's blood iron that we could have missed. We did pick up blood iron, but I used it in order to make... make uh mana maybe i wasn't supposed to use it Ooh, i hope that's not the case <laughs> get back
No one away to win. I'm not sure how this is going to work. Let's go ahead and put our stuff... Oh, there's blood iron right here. <laughs> Don't miss the blood iron, y'all. It was right there in front of me. Okay. This first one, I think, is life seed because it grants life to all. And then the second one. Sun's rays and metal form. Treasure sought. So that would be like gold. I can float upon the sea, but not a vessel. Wood. And then the last one is blood iron because it says... The touch I'm cold through my color is fire. What am I? A gem of desire. This one. Okay. The offerings crumble, forming into dust that coats the surface of the tablet, filling in the cuts of the inscriptions. A greenish flash of light blinds you for a moment. The dust vanishes. That's it, I guess. Can't say I feel as if a godlike blessing has fallen upon me. Prior blinks away the after effects of the flash of magical light. Shrugs. He gestures down the road. Hopefully it did something. Hey, should head on through the portal. If Pico's up to his words. Yeah, let's go through the portal. Agreed. Though I fear Pico is right. The final stretch won't be free of danger. Okay, so we got that done. After realizing the blood iron was right next to us. Y'all didn't Emissary. see that. Pico the exuberant sends his regards and reminds to be wary of the heretical forgekin. May the Earth Mother guide you on this quest. Please, use the portal at your will. Thank you. Stay safe out there. The Warden gestures a salute with her head, then darts off to join the rest of the pack. You stand at the sturdy metal gates of illustrious Lux Superior, capital of Forge. Sunlight glints off the golden surface, blinding any inattentive viewer. Technomagic turrets guard the corners of the gate, ready to disintegrate any invaders. The gates glide open. Okay. This is pretty. Kind of reminds me of the, of the Protoss Starcraft. Got multiple places. Let's go here first. The gleaming golden hued walls of the town hall strike you with their overwhelming ostentation. The room itself is straight and angular, surfaces adorned with a hexagonal pattern. An array of podiums partition the hall into sections. Upon these, you see a selection of sleek weaponry and unfamiliar technological aggregations, all aesthetically engraved. An oppressively tall and rigid figure stands awaiting, hands clasped in front. Their face is hidden behind a mask of shining white ceramic. A set of steel composite tentacles form a circular shape, a halo behind their back. Emissary, the Order has expected your arrival. Her voice sounds from the general region of her neck, mechanical, monotone in cadence. My quest has not been a secret. I expect you know why I'm here. Word travels fast from one end of Aeol to the other. Mount Ishros beckons those who wish to talk of an accord. We, enlightened a forge, are the fourth and last on the account. The others have agreed to attend, I gather. That is so. I inquire. Why should we agree to this? Even through the fuzzy monotone, you can sense, if not hear, the sneer. Forge has no need or want for the superstitious atavisms of the other factions. We hover above this banality. Sailing upon vast oceans of knowledge and progress. Our sights set to the stars. 
Conflict will not help your goals. War and death are the enemies of knowledge. We have to stop the discord before it's too late. The others would be no match for our technological superiority. Their threat is negligible. But it is not zero. Perhaps. Therefore, I will grant your quest respect. In return of a favor. Forge will attend if you retrieve an artifact stolen from us. Find the culprit and mete out deserved punishment. They escaped through the southern gate. Access to our portal is restricted, so the thieves are still within eightfold. Once you've retaken the artifact, well, you may hold on to it for the time being. It may be of assistance, after all. I expect it returned at the mountain. If you're all such advanced warriors, why can't you find it yourself? Why waste resources <laughs> required elsewhere, when one such as yourself presents himself soon enough? I mean, that's logical, I guess. <laughs> I'm not a censored, beholden to the whims of pompous blowhards. You tell him, Yorick. Yorick, my friend, some diplomacy, if you please. After all, we are envoys. Forge takes no offense. We admire a fiery spirit. You would go far in the embrace of our augments. Ugh, no thanks. I prefer my meat the regular way. You know, soft, squishy, meaty, <laughs> not ceramic scales and metallic limbs. You know, meaty. <laughs> Meridian gives no reply and continues to tower imperiously. You decide it's time to depart. Okay, time to go. <laughs> uh, let's go over here. You stand at the courtyard garden of the Museum of Memory. Forge King sit on benches next to glittering fountains, conversing of mundane matters while enjoying the pleasant weather. A group of workers carry new items into the museum. The museum itself holds collections of relics of the past. Tools, gadgets, jewelry, weapons, artifacts, remnants of forgotten conflicts, and obsolete technologies. Two separate halls were built for the vestiges of lost biospheres, the flora and fauna. From Foloi, the destroyed homeland of centaurs, and the Golden Coast, the destroyed homeland of observers. An elderly centaur ambles down the central walkway. He stops at a memorial column, its surface covered with intricate carvings of the history of Foroi. At the base, he lays a bouquet of flowers, bright and solemn. Okay, let's go up here just to take a look. I don't think there's anything up for us, but it's good to get the rest of the map opened up. Northward, Lux Superior, Eastward, Portal, Westward, Radiant. Hmm. These tracks by the signpost are messy. Which way? Prior points westward. You think the thief didn't head to the portal? Prior may be right. Difficult to sneak by any guards. They're likely hiding in the wilderness. Then let's head to the forest. Ready yourself. We may find a fight on our hands. The fading path leads to a small clearing between the mountains. You see the figure of a puppet master, a creation of Phobos. She swirls around wildly, as if searching for something, not paying your approach any attention. Where'd you drop it, you bonehead? <laughs> the puppet master shouts to the shadows of a I crow. like the voice. <laughs> That's a funny voice. You squint your eyes to see what she's shouting at, but can't make out anything until a tiny bit of the grayness itself suddenly twitches. The gray emits a faint sound. The puppet master spins around to face you. The artifact is mine. 
You will not get it! A sensation of powerful magic gathers around her as she spreads her arms. Slowly, carefully, something clambers out of the darkness of the grove. Oh, not one of these. Yorick groans, his face turned ashen. Oh no, Yorick's scared. Not a good sign if Yorick is scared. All right. Okay, let's get Yorick in close first. Okay, we already used everything. Can we shoot any further? No. Okay. The reason I like putting Yorick in, like, just right away is I get concerned. Um. Okay. That wasn't too bad. Oh, there's another one. Okay. I feel like I want to bring Prior down to help York finish off this one. Okay, we're not close enough, but we can do this. I should have gone in further. I didn't realize that. Okay. Um, Berserk. And turn. Poor Yorick is just taking a beating. I guess we should have put Yorick on the Puppet Master instead. Okay. Oh, we already used both. I forgot. Okay. Mmm. go and that's all we can do yep wait because your oh york has one more let's use a move defeated. The puppet master and the eerie thing no longer draw breath. Still, they signify the bind everyone on Eo finds themselves in. 
Why would Phobo steal an artifact from Forge? Nothing in their belongings. I guess they lost it? Yeah, I think that's what she was yelling about when we arrived. The doll creature apparently misplaced it during their escape, poor thing. Poor? You think so? Yorick rubs the back of his neck, a puzzled look adorning his face. There's just something about this monster. Stuck in an increasingly small porcelain shell feels wrong. Aye, well, you can say that about most of Phobos. It's what happens when magic is twisted for unnatural purposes. Who says there's anything natural in magic? We're just accustomed to using it in our way or another, and everyone thinks their way is right. Ah, oh, never mind. Let's go find that artifact. There, hidden within the sea of leaves, you notice the glint of a metallic object. After brushing the organic detritus aside, you find the trident dagger. As you pick up the artifact, a faint swirl of magical energy passes through your hand. Okay, so we got the artifact and get some gold here. You found it. The artifact? Arc Druid Meridian will be pleased to hear you may use the portal. The Kemdi Corporal salutes, then marches off to gather up his companions. This is it, dear emissary. Benefits to faction leaders have been rendered. They demanded favors in return of attending the gathering, an event meant to help all the peoples of Aeol. This very moment grants those in power a chance for diplomacy before discord slices too deep and blood begins to spill across the land. Are they humble enough for it? The ancient ruin is a suitable location, of course. One hopes the collapsed walls and lost homes remind of what is at stake, what happens when the sword of retribution is let loose onto Aeol. And so, Mount Ishros awaits. The portal we go. Oh, it looks like there's an alm, so let's get healed up. And more gold! I hope it's as easy to find gold in the main game. Probably won't be. Uh, we've got a fight here, it looks like. And it looks like a scary thing, too. The path up the mountainside is blocked by a beast-like bee creature, the likes you've never seen before. The bumblebee stares with unblinking eyes, its limbs oddly stiff as it raises a spear. Behind it stand two familiar figures, a siren of anchorage with a Svein escort. <laughs> the beast utters a strange noise. What in the name of the Nine Hells? Prior, looking tense, signs a warning to Yorick. His other hand slowly moves towards his weapon. Never had the opportunity to fight a monstrous bee before. Don't you dare think I'll miss this chance. I've no idea what this is about. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. <laughs> Prior nods. I will. There ain't anything more careful than a mace to the skull. <laughs> Yorick stems both feet to the ground, then bites down on a mushroom. That sounds more blunt than careful, Yorick. Maybe we shouldn't go in right away. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll just go up one. Leave like York right here. We can try to support Yorick, I guess. Can we shoot anyone from here? Yes. That one.
Ooh, I didn't know that that one could jump. Oh, not good. Not good. <laughs> not good. Oh, the scary melee dude. Oh no, the bee should not be on prior. We do not want the bee on prior. <laughs> B. No, bad B. I'm having a hard okay. There we go. I'm having a hard time clicking on prior. Mm. Click on my portrait. Nope. That's not good. I'm having a very hard time with clicking on prior. Well, it's saying that you're- okay, sorry. Okay, we got- it's actually York's turn, so... We gotta move. Yeah, I cannot seem to click on prior the move. And prior does have two stamina, so I don't understand. Okay. That's not good. I can't click on prior here. <laughs> oh no. Is there another way? Okay, this is not good because I can't click on prior. Did I get an ability used from the enemy? I don't know. The bee is going to be a long fight because the bee has the most HP. Ah. Okay. I actually use the Berserk for prior, I'm not sure. Mm. We'll try to make this work. <laughs> like... I don't know if the bee will come after... Rick, I'm afraid that it'll just keep hitting prior if I leave if I make Yorick move. It's not good. Okay. I 
wish I could use the like rocks as like a way to get out of line of sight. Okay, we got the bee down. Now we've got to take care of the caster. I really wish I could have used prior here, but there was just no... Nothing was working with clicking on it in this situation for some reason. We can't use Power Basher. Oh yeah, because we just use it. Get rid of her. I'm hoping we can get rid of her and and beat this, but we'll see. I don't have a lot of HP left. There we go. Unfortunately, Pryor was a casualty, but I couldn't move Pryor. So that might be a bug. Remember, it's a demo, so they'll probably the get that worked out. Lie defeated, their blood coloring the frozen ground. You feel this encounter was an ill omen to come across the kin of Anchorage so close to the end, here to disrupt the gathering, or just another outrage to fuel resentment. Pryor taps the corpse of the bumble beast with a stick, a puzzled look on his face. Hmm, trouble never seems to leave us be. No time for second thoughts now, lass. We're almost at the ruins. Others will start arriving soon. Let's hope so. The path is now clear at least. Onward then, and may Elma truly bless this day. Become a believer in the Earth Mother, have you? At this point, I'll accept anything useful, divine invention included. Yay, we've got it open up. Ooh, what's this? Prominently displayed in the middle of the rune is the knot. Legend says the artifact bestows a cordial disposition on those in its presence. Even if the effect is untrue, it remains a powerful symbol for those seeking unity. Pryor gazes at the legendary artifact, arms crossed, brow furrowed. Trying to test if it works, if the stories are true. Pryor does a seesaw gesture with his hand, then signs a question at Yorick. I'm already most cheerful, Pryor. I can't go any farther. The world couldn't handle it. Disregarding <laughs> the answer, Pryor turns his sight back to the knot, eyes narrowed. He rubs his jaw thoughtfully. Come on, enough of that. We've preparations to do. Okay. Let's go. They're supposed to be pointing up with everyone at the gathering. A howling wind blows through the remnants of an ancient past, stirring up clouds of amber dust. Crumbling stone and rusting metal now signify the destroyed city of a long-forgotten civilization. You sit on a shattered slab of stone, waiting. Yorick gazes across the amphitheater, absent-mindedly chewing on a mushroom. Pryor sits next to him, cleaning his weapon. A faint sound echoes across the broken pavement. Pryor taps Yorick on the shoulder then points at the entrance into the courtyard. Finally! You're as bad at pathfinding as you are, Pryor! Pryor rolls his eyes, <laughs> places his weapon down, gets up, and prepares to welcome the arrivals. The leaders of the factions, their retainers walking behind, appear through the gateway. A couple of suspicious looks get thrown between the groups, but all act courteous enough. Travel affairs are set in order. Guards fan out, finding optimal spots to look out for trouble. Commotion subsides as the four leaders sit on their stone-hewn seats. Silence follows. Yorick leans over to whisper. Going well so far. They haven't immediately started killing each other. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Or 
They're trying to recall all the things they want to blame on each other. <laughs> Shh. Not the time to be a jester, Yorick. Meridian the Machinist abruptly stands to address the other faction leaders. Forge has been summoned here, presumably by one of you. Why, pray tell, when we have celestial goals to accomplish? <laughs> you presume much, flesh machine. His voice reminded me of Worf. It's funny. Uh, why am I seeing... I see, feel like I'm seeing... With this story, some Star Trek-y themes in here. Silence again falls upon the ruin. Meridian's faceplate is fixed towards Ornir. Pico looks at the others, grinning. Then this is time wasted. We will make our departure. Yes, free to your abhorrent ways. Your thoughtlessness is the downfall of all. Magic is heretical enough, but the way you twist it into yourself. You have the nerve to condemn others, Ornia, leader of a band of murderous marauders who burn our forests and loot our lands. Beasts who lack sense must be subdued in the name of security. Your misbegotten majory is no less foul than that of Forge. The Council of Anchorage has issued a directive. Cease use of unapproved magic under punishment of death. For there to be peace, all factions must agree. Yes, this, this is Star Trek themes right here. Right here. They're creating a, a directive and they have to all agree to not use magic because it's like, like it can cause like harm. So yeah, it's very in there. Oh, they have all the different factions, just like in Star Trek with all the different personalities. I love it. Who put your kind in charge dictating what is appropriate? The weakness inherent in biology makes you redundant. Relics of a failed past. Ha! We see you as the warning you are. You forgot a nature, refuse the organic, and violate the sacred balance with rotten artificiality. The future you promise is death incarnate. Cease the prattle, worshipper of a dead god. Yielded armor. Won't protect from fangs that rip out your soft throat. None of you pose a threat to Forge. These quibbles are inconsequential. A chilling cackle echoes through the ruin. Its source eventually congregating into murmur of madness. Silent so far. Meridian is right on one account. This is insignificant. All your beliefs and technologies are meaningless in front of the hallowed creator. Futile attempts to delay the inescapable. Change is inevitable. The only path to survival is adaptation. Trivial posturing. Retribution for your past deeds will be swift, dark creation. Our kin remember your slaughter. In return, Slomir will be cleansed. The grin of the choir can't be seen, but is felt by everyone. The sky of eyes wink, meeting the challenge with mockery. You slowly lose track of the thread of accusations and grievances. The voices of the leaders grow louder, more belligerent. Your head begins to throb. Suddenly, you sense a strange vibration on your belt. It's the trident dagger. Huh, what's this? Something wrong. The dagger. It's... Hold on, this is bad. Yorick, look at the knot. The artifact in the courtyard vibrates intensely as its sections twist and grind against each other. 
Flashes of blinding light periodically flare out of its center. Realization hits you. The knot is being overcharged. We're under attack. Run! The leaders snap into attention. Everyone glances at the artifact. For a second, the world is a still image. Then all break into a run, heading for the gateway. Yorick and Pryor rush off to assist people in the escape. The trident dagger emits a shrill, ear-piercing sound. You grab it from your belt and stare at its gleaming prongs. It feels like it's pulsating in your hand. You fling it away and turn to flee. The world turns white. That's white. <laughs> Congratulations, you have completed the demo for Broken Alliance. Please wishlist us on Steam. Yeah, so... Be sure to wishlist this game if you're interested in it and also go try the demo out for yourself. The link will be down in the descriptions. It, this is from Steam Next Fest. Steam Next Fest is happening from October 14th to the 21st. So go play some demos because I can't play them all. Okay, peace. Bye-bye.